G'day folks, welcome to the channel that exposes false teachers as well as church grifters, hucksters and charlatans. In this video, I want to play you a clip by a man who calls himself Prophet Lovey. Yes, that's right. He, he calls himself a prophet. He seems to think he was called by God. He was visited by God in a vision when he was six years old and God told him he was going to be a prophet. And out of this, you know, prophethood that he's got, he's made millions of dollars and gotten filthy rich. He pastors a church in the US. And in this video, he says that if you're poor, if you're poor and you're a Christian, it's because you are cursed. I want to play you this video. Then afterwards, I want to totally refute what he says. And I want to show you that actually it's the opposite of what he says. Let's get right into it. Here's this video from this false prophet, Prophet Lovey. I want you to understand something by the Spirit of God. As I was meditating and praying, uh, the Lord was ministering to me. And I want you to understand that poverty is a choice if you are in Christ. Boy. Now, some people will abuse what I'm saying, but I know what I'm saying. Poverty is not only a choice, but it is somebody choosing to be in a curse, especially if you are in Christ Jesus. Mm. Are you hearing me? Yes. Listen to what the Bible is saying. It's saying, a good father leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But then he doesn't put a full stop. There is a continuation. Yeah. It says, and, meaning it's part of it. Yeah. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So you cannot leave an inheritance for your children's children until you know how to take up what is laid up by the sinner. Come on. Come on. There is a wicked person somewhere. There is a lost person somewhere. Yes. That is holding all your billions, your millions Come on. that you are supposed to use for the glory of... Come on. But if you don't understand the principle and the way to get what is yours, what you're going to do is this. You're going to find yourself. You're going to find yourself continually. Demonizing people that hold your wealth to your next level. Wow, your teacher. That man is a total false prophet. He's lying to the people that he's speaking to. And to be quite honest, if those people honestly believe that he's speaking for God and that he's speaking the truth, those people are lost. Because the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. True sheep will hear the voice of Christ. And it says, a stranger they will not follow. And the Bible says the total opposite of what that false prophet is saying. Let me prove it to you. If you go to the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 6, verse 20 to 23, it says this. Then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast your name out as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. I want you to notice here that Jesus, he lifts up his eyes, he looks at his disciples, and he says the total opposite of what that false prophet says. He says, blessed are you, poor. He doesn't say, cursed are you, poor. He says, blessed are you, poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. The total opposite of what this false prophet says. Now, Jesus is looking at them because he knows that his disciples are going to be in poverty for the rest of their lives. You know, you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the apostle Paul says very clearly that the apostles were homeless. They were dressed in rags. They were hungry and thirsty and they had become the scum of the earth. They had become the scum of the earth. This is not saying that all Christians everywhere are going to be poor. And it's not saying that just because you're poor that you're going to make it to, into heaven or you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. But Jesus is speaking to those he knows are going to be poor and they're going to suffer. And he says, blessed. He wants to make sure that they know that they are blessed. The total opposite of what this prophet would have them believe. Now, have a look at the book of Revelation 
chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. And this is Jesus speaking to the church in Smyrna. It says this, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. Here in this passage, Jesus says, I know your poverty. These Christians were living in poverty. And Jesus didn't say, and it's because you're cursed. He didn't say that. He says, but you are rich. They were physically poor, but they were spiritually rich. You see, this false prophet is lying to people when he tells people that, you know, they, uh, that if they're poor, that they're somehow under a curse. You know, these are the words of Jesus. And the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And if you're somebody that, that would rather listen to this false prophet, this false prophet who's telling you that if you're poor, um, then you're cursed. And if you're rich, then God's blessing is on you. If, you. if you would rather listen to his words than the words of Jesus, it's because you are not one of Christ's sheep. You are lost. You're a sinner. You need to get saved. That's, that's the truth. Because the Bible is very clear. My sheep hear my voice. A stranger, they will not follow. That's what Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 10. But what about this proverb where the Bible says, you know, the the, a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Well, there's a connection between that and the words of Jesus when he says, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. There's a connection there. When you look at the Old Testament, it's clear that Solomon spoke these words during a time uh, that he was reigning as the Davidic king. And the nation of Israel was blessed. He, it was blessed during his father's reign and it was blessed during his reign. It was an incredibly uh, a blessed time for the people of Israel. The Davidic king was sitting on the throne. The son of David was sitting on the throne. And he's really in many ways a type of Christ. And really what Solomon observed was that the righteous laid up an inheritance for his children's children. But the wealth of the wicked, you know, you have the time of the judges before the time of the Davidic kings and so forth. The wealth of the wicked ended up going to the righteous, right? So Solomon observed this during his time as king. And really, this is not a, a universal principle for, for all peoples, for all time, uh, anywhere in the world, right? This is not a universal principle in that sense, because just look around the world. You see, you know, the righteous living in poverty. You see the wicked uh, living in wealth and luxury, right? Just look at third world countries. Just look at Muslim countries, right? So this is not a, a current universal principle, but it is something that will come to pass in the future, when the son of David returns, Jesus Christ, to reign on the throne of David from Jerusalem. At that time, yes, the righteous will inherit the earth. The righteous will inherit the earth. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are the poor for yours is the kingdom of God. You see, there's a connection there between what Jesus is teaching and what that passage is teaching. That passage in Proverbs has nothing to do with, you know, somebody, you know, some wicked person having billions of dollars for you out there, right? It's just crazy. Only a crackpot, only a fool would believe that stuff. And, you know, this guy, Prophet Lovey, false prophet Lovey, he knows that this is a lie. He knows it. He's conning these people. He knows that the people that come to listen to him are simple minded people who don't read their Bible. They're not right with God. And he's taking advantage of them by getting them to give him money. It's disgraceful and it's disgusting. And uh, really, you know, this false prophet needs to be rebuked by, you know, as many people as possible because he's hurting a lot of people. He's, he's harming a lot of people. He's leading a lot of people astray. And um, we really need to pray for him. And we need to pray for the people that he's deceiving. We need to pray that he gets saved, that he actually comes to a, a true knowledge of the truth, that he repents and gets saved. And we need to pray for the people that he's leading astray, that they would repent, repent of their greed, repent of their idolatry, repent of their worship of man. They need to repent of all of these things and they need to get saved. Well, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.